The turmoil continues right now. We're watching Russia and Ukraine. We're looking at the price of oil and the commodities, the stock indexes, and the economy as a whole. I'll take you through it. You came here for the truth. Looking at the price of oil at the time of this recording, WTI is around $94, Brent 97. And so we could easily see this being pushed over $100 a barrel in short order. Gold is seeing the price rising above 1900 again. And of course, it is inching its way towards its record high. Speaking of gold, Russian gold holdings obviously had increased significantly over the past several years, while their US dollar holdings had been declining. You look at the comparison here of the price of gold as well as Russia's gold holdings, and there is a certain correlation. So perhaps you could argue Russia had a good idea in increasing their gold holdings. Their stock market, on the other hand, has not fared very well, of course, of everything that's been happening with Russia and the Ukraine and the tensions and so on, with the additional possibility of sanctions coming in a very short period of time, that, of course, not too bullish. That's just comparing the Russian stock market to the S&P. So looking at the difference there, the Russian stock market clearly way off its highs that it experienced in the fourth quarter of 2021. This is just showing us some, you know, potential here and what could happen, what has happened as a result of the geopolitical shocks. All around the world, markets were affected by what has happened in addition to all of the activities of the central banks and so on. Now, looking at oil, I think, to me, it is very clear, $100 a barrel, like, forget about the fundamentals, the supply and demand, the need for more of, of oil and, and all the different products that are made from oil. You can see right here that, you know, with everything geopolitically and so on, this is going to force the price higher, at least for the short term. Of course, if there are easing tensions, they start talking, that could bring the price down, all right? And here is when you know that the price of oil is starting to become more attractive to a certain group of people. Frackers push into once dead shale patches as oil nears $100 a barrel. So we're seeing this now. So in areas where this is just not profitable at that $40 a barrel that it was at for a long period of time, now at $100 a barrel, they're starting to go back in. How long it persists here? Well, that remains to be seen. This is just showing you the gentle, general sentiment. And right now, it's not overly stretched. It's not in the other way. It's just kind of flat at this point here. And why? Because we've come off the highs, but at the same time, there's so many different events that are happening here. And this is, of course, dealing with, um, you know, what's happening in the financial markets, specifically in the United States. Global leverage for all strategies, just showing us that at this moment, there is quite a bit of leverage still in the system. I've noted that when you look at margin, for instance, we've come off the high there. But this is just giving us an idea of the amount of leverage. It is back up to the same level that we were at in terms of gross leverage anyway, uh, back in January of 2020. Okay. And then I wanted to show you this, what is going on in China right now, additional crackdowns, this is escalating even just since the last time I mentioned it. TechRec, Chinese technology shares, suffer the worst two-day drop since July. Okay, coming down yet again and again and again and again. And they're basically just saying that for Jack Ma's Ant Group, they're going to go even further. They want to just make sure there is nothing left. So we will see what happens here. And of course, there had been this desire to buy the dip in the Chinese tech stocks, but 
as of right now, that has not been profitable. Let me tell you, there's been bounces along the way, uh, but it just shows us that it's not just the NASDAQ that's down. It seems to be tech stocks all over the place, but China's tech stocks certainly, certainly getting beaten down. I mean, at least right here, I mean, it was what? Eight, oh, I mean, 82.50 back in June of 2021. And now that is down under 5,500. I mean, in a relatively short period of time, getting absolutely smashed. Now, with inflation going crazy, not everybody is suffering here. So there are some traders that are making a killing off this. An obscure corner of Wall Street is making billions trading in inflation. Small teams have been making the most of the global price shocks with trades that can be just as volatile. So it's talking about the different instruments and different things that they are doing. As inflation goes up, there are always going to be those products there that can absolutely perform well. Okay, But it's, as they say here, obscure. It's not somebody's just going to go buy a, you know this ticker or that ticker and they'll be able to do so. It is volatile. It is something that we need to be more sophisticated around. But just to tell you that, don't worry. You don't have to shed a tear for Wall Street. Uh, they're making money. Okay. And then since we have more time here, I wanted to show you a few things. Um, looking at this, Bank of Canada. Now, of course, with everything happening with Russia, Ukraine, the tensions. Um, this may give rise to central banks having a, an excuse to pump money in. Uh, we don't know if that, that will be the case, but here we are. This is related to Canada. Total assets have declined by 14% from the peak in March 2021. So their central bank has already reduced their assets 14%. It's a departure from what we see, you know, with, let's say, the ECB or the Fed. But it's one central bank, right? And, you you know, you can just compare the different things, the um, bonds and, and repos, treasury bills and so on. Just giving you an idea of what has happened. And it compares this central bank to the others. Because we're kind of waiting on the Federal Reserve to reduce their balance sheet. We're not there yet. They've reduced the amount of purchases that they have made. That's been very clear. And the expectation is within a month, we're going to see an interest rate hike. But does the situation in Russia change things? You know, if the Federal Reserve is saying we are worried about employment and price stability, well then, that situation of Russia shouldn't immediately impact them. So they shouldn't say anything. They should just be, hey, we're going to continue on with what we were doing. But that remains to be seen. Looking at this, rents reach insane levels across the U.S. with no end in sight, as well as this article. For most Americans, owning a home is now a distant dream. Basically, both relate to the same thing. Prices of rent, prices of homes have risen dramatically, and people don't know what to do. Okay, um, This, of course, leads more into what I was just talking about a minute ago, where the central banks, you know, if they don't step in, this becomes more of a problem. And then something that's happening you know, outside of the country becomes more of a priority than dealing with problems within the country. And that is getting the, the everything bubble under control. Okay. So we will see what happens. I'm going to end the video there. And uh, that's it. Take care.